It is ripping through here. It is absolutely ripping through. This is utter, utter madness. What's up? I don't know where I'm going. This is not completely enjoyable. No, I know, I'm quite scared. I don't think that we should go in there. I want to say for the record, I think this is a bad idea. What a lovely day. God, this morning is beautiful. Ah! Let's start that again. Good morning, everyone. We are heading to the Morbian today. The Morbian is a big kind of inland, inland waterway uh, with lots of islands and the big center is called Van, which is a big town and uh, we're going to be exploring Van as well. We have heard so many good things about the Morbihan. It's kind of one of those sailing destinations in, in South Brittany that is kind of famous. Everyone goes to the Morbihan, except us. <laughs> so now we are finally going to uh, explore for ourselves. Are you excited to be going somewhere new? Yeah. I am. Yeah. You want to get going, don't you? You're, yeah. you're, you're kind of like... Yeah. Yeah. We, when, when, when we go, we Yeah, go. I know. All right, let's go then. Turn first. Yeah, just slip it. Yeah. All right, bow or midline. The midline's more of a slip, as uh, st uh, uh, spring. All right, midline's off. Bow's off. <laughs> There's like no wind. We're just <laughs> sitting here. <laughs> Not the reefing line, I don't think. You could loosen it up a little bit, but that's not taut. Oh, uh, no, that's not it. What the hell? Okay, it's the second reefing line caught out of the way. In our continual life learning lessons, what did we just learn from that? Uh, I don't know. What happened? Did you pull the reef, reefing line through? So, you know, what happened was, let me just tell you what it was. We have single line reefing. Oh, and it, it wouldn't matter whether it was single line or not, but the, at the, at the um, gooseneck end, at the mast end, yeah. there's a loop of reefing line that's normally oh, tucked and it got in. Caught, it got caught around the As we raised it, it got caught in the, it got caught on the winch. I see. So the lesson is, if you can't get the main up, don't force it. And if you've got winches and you're struggling, something's wrong. All right, well, main's up, well done. Not that we've got any wind. 17 miles and it's eight o'clock in the morning and we're doing four and a half knots. So that's four hours, we are at 12. So, uh, <laughs> no. I met an old man I said, tell me your story He took out an old pen And wrote something for me
You're gonna catch us some dinner. I'm gonna catch us some dinner. Yeah, I've heard that before. And I watched him disappear like smoke. And I thought I'd just seen a ghost. Then I looked down at what he wrote. It said, Son, when you grow up, you'll be fine. Now you've got questions on your mind Life is gonna happen one way or the other Whether you like it or not Stop looking for the answers And you'll find what you've got Well, we're definitely punching at least three knots of tide at the moment. We're only making about two, two knots. You can definitely feel and see how the, uh, the water's all choppy all of a sudden. So we're just coming up to the entrance of the Morbion and obviously our timing is, is not impeccable because uh, if it was, we would have the tide with us and we had the tide against us. We knew that that was gonna be the case. Um, we had a couple of options. We could have uh, found somewhere to anchor for a couple of hours, which is definitely not outside the realms of possibility. But we decided to give it a go to try and punch through because, you know, why not? We're here now. There does seem to be one or two other boats doing the same thing. Uh, so yeah, we'll just see how we go. Hopefully we can uh, make it through the entrance. I don't know how strong the tide kind of rips through, but as I said, we're not there yet and it's already three knots. so. We'll wait and see. We get to the point where we're just not making any progress. We'll just ha have to turn around, just wait around out here for a couple of hours, which definitely won't be any hardship, and then try again once uh, the tide turns in a couple of hours' time. But it would be nice to get through. Bam. It would be nice to get through ahead of the crowd because obviously everyone is out day sailing at the moment. So there'll be a lot of space inside uh, for us to find a nice place to anchor. And, you know, we'd like to kind of get a jump on everyone because I guarantee you it will be absolutely chock-a-block in there tonight. Bit of a bouncy ride. The water's blue again. Hasn't been blue for uh, a few weeks. Lovely to see the blue water again. I can, d yeah, I can see a couple of boats who look like they're trying to get in. How are we going? There's an anchorage here. Is that before, before yeah, the end? Before, entrance? if we can't get through. Oh, okay. I okay. think it's just over there. All right. Well, that will be our plan B. We're down to two knots now, and I, honestly, I just don't think we're going to make it. There is a. We're punching the last hour of tide. So, this is like the, the, the ebb is coming out, and we're about an hour early. So, we've got the engine at. 2,000 revs, we're doing 1.6 knots. The thing that I find incredible is the eddies, the currents in the water, literally they, they're knocking the nose, like port and starboard madly. And there's three boats trying to get in. One brave bugger's doing it under sail. <laughs> I don't know how he's making any progress. Though we've got our main up, we followed the jib away because it was getting, doing nothing for us. It was being blanketed by the main. Um, but yeah, we're down to, down to a knot and a half. But, you know, I'm not in any rush. I've never yet, yet got the boat going backwards. <laughs> because of, because of tide. This may be a first. Yeah, we're barely making a knot now. Now, for those of you going, well, why don't you just wait till the tide to turn? Yeah, we can do. There's a nice little anchorage over there. This last little bit, this last constriction in the river, or in, in, in before the, the kind of the Bay of Morbion kind of comes out, should only go up another 500 meters. So we do believe, I do believe, that in approximately half a mile, this should settle down. How are you going? Well, uh, yeah, it's a bit interesting because we're trying to like stay out of the main channel or out of the channel, um, but we're also kind of running out of depth 
if we do that so I'm trying to like hug the five meter contour without getting too shallow but also without going into the deep water because you can actually see in a lot of ways it's quite easy because you can see like where the water is being disturbed and obviously that's where the tide is really ripping through so we're at 3.3 knots now well I'm doing 3.3 knots yeah I'll, a minute ago I wasn't doing that seven 7.8 meters underneath us yeah I reckon that when you get into that bit there in about 50 meters time yeah I think you'll probably get to 20 meters well I'm not planning to get to that bit I'm planning to skirt around around the edge that's my plan yeah and I can see we're just coming to this disturbed section and we're, we've lost a little bit of speed anyway it looks as you said before, like at least we've got plenty of time to admire the surrounds because the scenery is just exactly. gorgeous. Exactly, otherwise we'll be doing this at eight knots again. Did you see that? <laughs> it is ripping through here. It is absolutely ripping through. But um, we made it. We made it. We're back up to four and a half knots at 1800 revs, which is about where I'd want to be with a little bit of headwind. Now we just need to go find a good anchorage. And we don't have much indication as to what the bottom is. I'm assuming it's mud. Yeah, I think it's mud mud but there'll be the occasional rock so we need to make sure that we've uh, got the ability to dive on the anchor if it's uh, jams. We've got the ability to dive on the anchor. <laughs> Everyone wants to be skipper until skip needs to be done. It's true isn't it? Yeah. I feel like this navigation is really keeping us on our toes. It's like east coast navigation only with rocks. And more sailors I reckon. And uh, a smaller area. No this is more, more difficult. Yeah Brittany is challenging although I would say it's too challenging. I wouldn't want to do this in a fixed kill boat. So that anchorage over there that you were talking about, I think it's buoyed. A lot of the anchorages are buoyed. I don't know if the uh, camera will pick this up. I do have a polarised lens on, but a polarising filter. You can see a massive shallow patch there. So there is some element of eyeball navigation, at least. You know, it's not like the Bahamas where you can see the different depths so easily but you can see like the super shallow patches, which is somewhat reassuring. These tides are crazy. I was helming just before and like, literally the boat started just going sideways, just going sideways. I was like, what the hell? It's all very well and good when you've got plenty of space around you, but not when you're like dodging all these banks. But what I would say is that this is stunning. This is so beautiful. I'm kind of not enjoying it as much as I should because uh, I'm stressed about the navigation, but um, it is so lovely, particularly in this beautiful weather. What's wrong? What's wrong? I don't know where I'm going. Okay. Well, no, no, look, look at this. Can you not, can you not stay to this channel here? This tide is strong and literally the boat's going slider. How the hell are we more up in van without Well, there's no tide in van, it's up a canal. You okay? Yeah! She's not completely enjoyable. No, I know, I'm quite stressed out. Just follow the steeper channel all the way around. And, uh, can, can you see with your polarizers that yeah, shallow? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I hope you can see that. What do you think? Should we just like drop the anchor here and just wait until the tide turns? I don't think we can actually go through that. I'll just see what it does. I don't. Babe, we can't. That is an insane, insane I don't think that we should go in there. I want to say for the record, I think this is a bad idea. Babe, I'm scared. Don't be scared. Why not? This is insane. 
Well, we're down to one knot and we're doing five or four, so that's four knot, four knot current at least. I'm pretty sure we're not moving. Look, look at that transit. Yeah, we're not moving. We're not moving. Yeah. Zero. Hold on, mate. Utter, utter madness. Like, how is that boat in front of us sailing? That little homie cat. Well, they don't have, they probably don't have any wetted surface, babe. They're probably like practically on the plane. Can we get on the plane? <laughs> I think it's going to ease up. I think it's just, I think as it's you just, said, is it, as it goes like around the corner. Oh, it's between the islands, it's a good stretch. Yeah. Yeah, the book did say that between the islands, it's particularly bad. But, you know, it's 40 minutes after low water. But I think the water, I don't understand the tides around here because obviously low water at the mouth of the, of the Morbihan. It, like, it's slack, it was slack there 40 minutes ago, but it's still on the ebb here. So I think that there's a lag. I don't know. I don't understand. Probably we should have. <laughs> we should have bought like a large scale chart before we came in here and checked all the tides out, but we didn't. Oh, All right, after a quick uh, conference, we have decided to press on to Van. Uh, we're about halfway kind of up the Morbihan at the moment, and there have been plenty of places where we could either anchor or pick up a buoy. Not sure what the situation with, is with the boys, because my understanding is that they're all like privately owned, but then if they're available, you can kind of pick them up. But then I don't know what happens if the owner comes back. I don't know. We're starting to pick up tide now, which is good. Would rather just, uh, kind of press on and get there today and then next week uh, when we come back in this direction then we're gonna stop and explore this area spend a night or two at anchor and uh, get the dinghy out get the outboard working again hopefully and uh, that would be awesome if we can do that the perfect way to explore oh my child I know you heard it it's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt Ooh, I know you tried so hard Ooh, I know you've done your part It's not fair your time. How much longer will you suffer? We're in the uh, canal that leads up to Van and it's absolutely gorgeous. There's all these little fishing boats moored up to the side and sailing boats, little villages. It's just really, really sweet. It's also very, very narrow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, this is why there's uh, channel markers, I guess, so that you. Uh, Stay in the middle of the channel, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty narrow, pretty windy, pretty shallow, but very, very lovely. Okay. Pretty, isn't it? Beautiful, though. It's been quite the day. <laughs> it has been quite the day. It's been a huge day. For some reason, I thought today would be like really calm and slow. Well, the first few hours were calm. Yeah, it's been a great day. It's been fun. It's been pretty nerve wracking at times. But it's been a good day so far. <laughs> so far. Oh boy. Well, we didn't make it into van, not yet at least. We uh, were kind of inching our way up the creek and we Nick was like, this is really shallow. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm. Nick said, there seems to be a massive bridge in front of us. Like, what's all that about? And I was like, yeah, I'm not sure. Didn't kind of properly look into the whole van situation in my defense I didn't realize we're coming to van today it's a bit of a last minute decision so we called up the marina in van and they're like yeah no the bridge doesn't open till 8 p.m and this was about four so we're like, oh, okay so we've just turned around in this little creek 
and uh, picked up a mooring buoy. And um, what are we doing, Nick? Are we going to van tonight? Yeah, we have not stayed here. Okay, we're going. We're going to van tonight, definitely. But yeah, today's been tough, and I have to say, it hasn't gotten any easier. Like as the hours have gone on, <laughs> we anchored to start with, but we couldn't get out of the channel. And then we tried to like, we dropped the anchor and then we realized it was still in the middle of the channel. We tried to, we then raised the anchor, tried to kind of inch a bit closer to the shore and then it shallowed out, shallowed out super quickly and we went aground. And then we're in this like really narrow channel with ferries coming up and down and we're trying to like turn around and I couldn't turn the boat around because I just couldn't, couldn't get it done. And yeah, it was just a bit of a mess to be honest. I'm kind of glad we didn't film it so I don't have to watch it all again. <laughs> I don't want to have to relive that. And uh, then we picked up this mooring boy, which was literally like 50 meters away. We probably should have done that from the beginning. In two hours time, two hours from now, the bridge opens and we're getting into van this evening. Nick's, Nick's insisting. It's been a bit of a tough day at the office, hasn't it? Well, we could be in the office. That's, that's true. See, that's, that's in perspective. We'll be back. I think we're just brazen having a lifting keel boat. Like no sane person with a keel boat would have done what we did this afternoon. <laughs> I think we're lazy is what we are sometimes. Think, well, why do we think we're lazy? I think that from a navigational point of view, we are a little bit lazy because we're like, ah, oh, it's fine. We've got a lifting keel, like we'll be right. Yeah, as long as we can see two meters of water, yeah, we're, we're exactly. like, yeah, we're like, oh, we'll probably be able to get over that, that like really shallow patch. It's true, actually, though. We are pretty lazy. No, we're not lazy. I think we're... Um, Complacent. Entitled. <laughs> what do you think we are? <laughs> Comment down below. <laughs> After a long day, it was a relief to finally make our way into van. We were given directions to tie up in front of the Capitanery, and so we motored down the long canal with a procession of other boats to find our berth for the next few nights. is this? I have to say, Nick was right. Coming here was definitely a good decision. And check out what is right on our doorstep. I don't know if I'm pointing in the right place, but you got the idea. Awesome, God, this is good. Yeah, what a day. Yeah, what a day. Highs and lows, that was. I think it's time to go and have a beer. It's in the sunken car. No, I haven't seen that. <laughs> Feeling better now? I know I am. I'm going to feel better in about 10 minutes when I'm sinking a pint of golden ale. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode, everyone. Join us next week where we explore the beautiful city of Van. It is truly, truly spectacular. Probably my favorite city in all of France, which is really saying something. We also happened to film our Ruby Rose 2 announcement video while we we're here in Van and we published it. So if you want to see a little bit of behind the scenes content from that whole process, then that's in next week's episode as well. So if you don't want to miss it, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you like this week's episode, then leave us a comment down below. Thanks again and we'll see you next week.